I decided to do this in the Fred Meyer parking lot so if it goes wrong, I'm not far away from the Ford dealership. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, twenty-five. Okay, here's my first sample. I don't see any water, so that's a good thing. Now I have to cycle the key. Let's try that. Oh my god, hopefully I didn't see anything else. Why is that so scary to me? I don't know, we'll just put it there. Hopefully it doesn't break. God. Okay, so I've been sitting here for a couple minutes just to make sure that everything seems to be going okay and everything seems to be going okay. So thank you again to Aaron from Power Stroke Tech Talk with A-Rod for talking me through on our mutual video. I'll link it somewhere. Hi, I'm Lex and this is Riot. And if you're new here, we live in a six by 12 cargo trailer. Okay, so driving back to camp, I thought of something which could be a great idea or it could be a terrible idea. But so I was like, what am I gonna do with this diesel now that I have it in this jar? How do I safely get rid of this? And then I thought to myself, well, there's not water in it. It looks clean. It looks like there's no impurities in it. I'll put it in my diesel heater tank. So as long as the sample is clear, I'll use it for my diesel heater. Worst case scenario, the diesel heater is like $140 to replace. Not that I think that that would be necessary, but I figure since this is clear anyway, may as well just use it. Okay, for continuity, just so you know, the next day is 4th of July, so I'm gonna wish you a happy 4th of July in the next clip. I have my video set to a slight delay, so I'm out of an area, ideally before the video about that area posts, as even though I am a small YouTuber, I have already had some concerning encounters, uh, one of which required a police report. So I love all 16,000 of you subscribers, but there are a few of you that require me to take some safety measures. So it might seem weird that I say happy 4th of July, but that is why there's a little lag time. So hey everybody, happy Independence Day. This is a good lifestyle for those that like independence, but I have something else to talk about. I have said it before, I am not in the market to date. A lot of people wonder what uh, dating on the road would be like. And so I'm gonna tell you, if I was in the market to be dating and this was a date, this is how I would do it. I'm gonna be making uh, potatoes. Um, so if I were to date, I would just, if you're gonna be boondocking, you gotta be friendly. So like he just came up smiling, hey, do you have a YouTube channel? Otherwise, I would just say, hey, great rig. Hey, uh, cute dog. You know, just like regular openers like you would anywhere else. I feel like if you're open to dating, it's the same, uh, it's like old school before freaking dating apps, which I abhor. I feel like it's like such a meat market to swipe on a person, like how degrading, you don't even know them. It's just complete um, superficiality of the first, visual impression not their smile not their they you know you even me on camera versus off camera i'm sure you guys you know some of you have met me and i'm sure i'm different at least slightly you know anyway but it's like old school back like when you had to be like hey girl what's up <laughs> or like if you liked a guy you'd be like oh can you help me build my campfire or whatever bullshit you know if you had a good opening one-liner for dating on the road what would it be? Put it in the comments below. Let's give our best, let's give our, hey, you come here often? <laughs> hey, you boondocked here before? I mean, leave your best dating one-liners in the comment section below. Let's see how much fun we can have with this. Anyway, so 
Um, if I was a dating, if I was interested, like super interested in dating, this situation is like a perfect interlude, I think, for those of you that are wondering how it would work. And it's as simple, hey, are you that girl from YouTube? And he's just nice. It's just being nice, right? And being open and saying hey to people. Am I really going to put all this on the internet, Ray? If you're wondering, I did put Cholula in the mashed potatoes. I'll let you know what I feel like afterwards. I don't know. That's who I really need is this one. I really need this one. You're all I need in this life. So I feel like I can be completely candid with you guys for the most part. I mean, boundaries are important in every relationship, even virtual relationships like this one. The non-date date went fine. It was dinner. <laughs> it wasn't that dramatic, but I'm also like under no illusion that you know, there's probably going to be expectations if I was to continue that. It does draw up the question, how long one needs to wait. If there's like, there's no appropriate timeline after like the death of a spouse to start dating again. Like, does it ever feel okay? Do you ever feel like you don't have to justify yourself? I know there's widows and widowers out there. I have yet to date. <laughs> it's been six years. And I, I don't know, there's like a sense of guilt, even just having dinner. I don't know. I don't know that that's healthy either. If you guys have experienced this, leave it in the comments below. But it goes to show, I don't know that dating's for me. I kind of have a good thing going. Plus, Riot would be jealous. Sometimes it's nice to take yourself out too. Every once in a while, I'll take myself out to a restaurant for food. It's okay to date yourself a little bit, I think. <laughs> Can't always date your dog. But I deserve happiness, everybody does. I don't know you guys, I'm very conflicted about this individual. Have you ever met someone that like completely destroyed all your paradigms and your image of yourself? It's not necessarily a bad thing, that's for sure. I'm not saying that I'm totally against it. I just think that this would this is such an uncomplicated life that I don't know. You know what I mean? But to each their own. <laughs> and to wrap up the 4th of July weekend, all weekend there was some like rave partiers here it's public land so you can't i mean could you complain could you call the ranger yeah could you just up and move absolutely um while well, it was loud and basically no one in the campground slept all weekend i knew that they were only going to be there for the weekend and i was planning on staying two weeks so i just toughed it out it was obnoxious though, and it is something to be aware of if you're gonna be camping on public lands. Sometimes people are rather disrespectful. For instance, when um, some other campers approach these folks about the bass music going until six in the morning, literally till six in the morning, so loud that you like feel those low vibrations going through your rig, there's just no sleeping. Anyway, they said, well, this is America, it's a free country. So it's like, it's not like you're going to rationally negotiate with these people about controlling their partying. Um, also, they weren't like sober individuals, so it's, you're not really going to get your message across anyway. But it's something to be aware of that sometimes people are going to roll up and have a full-on light show and like rave dance party in the forest, which if you're down for that, very cool. But if you're like me and like an excessive amount of sleep, uh, peaceful evenings, then it's not super fun. But it comes with the territory, what are you going to do? But be aware, be very aware of the dance party. Okay, we're going to wrap this video up. If you drive a diesel, please remember to drain your fuel and water separator fairly regularly. It's not as scary as at least I thought. If you're interested in dating on the road, it is just as doable as any other lifestyle, I think. And I think that even if you're in a situation like me 
as much as dating might complicate things, I think it's also good to not close yourself off to gifts and other people, especially people that are really lovable, are gifts in our life. So I think it's important to remain open. And finally, if a dance party breaks out while you're boondocking, you have a couple options. Sometimes it's good to just go along with it. All right, everyone. I really appreciate you watching. If you got anything out of this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing if you're interested in unapologetic vignettes of a lady's life living in a cargo trailer, camper conversion, full-time on the road, uh, which also includes colorful characters that we come across in our travels, which will largely be uncensored because while, yes, there is language that some people can be sensitive to, um, I do not believe that language with good intention is equatable to abuse or violence. I think there has to be intent behind the language. So myself and those that I come across will remain largely uncensored. And we hope that you come along on those journeys with us. Why is you not too sensitive to fucking language? Oh my God, they said a swear. Right, you wanna go on a date with me? You won't be my girlfriend. I'm not only gonna have to change preferences, but also species. Is that what you're telling me? I thought this was a casual relationship. I thought we were just friends. I thought you were my best friend. Now you want that booty. All right. Okay. Let's see how we can't finish this video. All right, and that's 4th of July weekend on the road. I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.